My name is Douglas Caldwell. I farm near Canton, Manitoba. Um, we uh, we started the uh, shelter belt in 2011. We planned it in the 2010 winter, uh, but the uh, main planting and the fence construction was done in 2011. Um, so we haven't really got a whole lot of uh, data put together, but we have done winter grazing previous to this. So. Uh, it's uh, going to be, uh, from here on in, we'll start to get uh, a lot more information put together. Um, the, main, uh, the main construction of the shelter belts are uh, a hybrid poplar, uh, roughly five feet apart, uh, quarter mile long rows. Uh, they're staggered. Uh, there's six rows like that, and then the, uh, the most westerly side is a uh, row of lilac and then a row of hybrid poplar. Uh, the lilac is mainly to capture the first heavy uh, amount of uh, snow and then the trees cut the wind from there on in. Um, the reason for doing this is so we can keep the cows out on the field, out of the corrals longer, uh, to cut, cut down on the uh, costs to uh, feed the cows and the amount of manure we have to haul out uh, the following year. Um, that way that we do either corn grazing or bale grazing uh, right out in the field and uh, it uh, limits the amount of uh, labour that's taken to do this. Um, plus the reason that it's a good thing for uh, the environment to have more trees in the uh, area. Um, the biggest proponent of, of uh, doing this would be uh, on one side, uh, we're using less diesel, but on the other side, that it does create problems with going around these with equipment. Uh, plus, the, uh, the number one problem is chemical drift with using a sprayer near these uh, shelter belts. So we're hoping within the next two or three years, as the trees get taller, the, uh, the impact of sprayer drift will be limited. Uh, so. Hopefully that will be taken care of. Um, the best thing I can really tell anybody who's looking to do this is that uh, number one, it's the right thing to do to plant trees. Uh, also, that it's better for the animals to be out in the open, fresh ground, not living on top of their own feces. Um, and the best way to equate it is that if you're putting trees around your house to reduce your heating bills then maybe that should be the same thing for your cattle and for your crops. If your cattle are not in the cold wind they won't use as much energy so your, your uh, feeding bills will be lower. Um, if your crop that's growing through the summer is not subject to the uh, warm hard winds then maybe more of the energy will go into growing the seed versus maintaining the straw from uh, fatigue, from being flipped back and forth by the wind. Plus, the wind does dry the crop out, so maybe you'll be able to uh, keep more moisture in the plant too, from uh, not being scorched by the wind. And I really do uh, recommend people to stop by, come by the farm, and take a look at the shelter belt. Um, whether it's through the summer, come and take a walk through the crop, see for yourself how well it's progressing and even during the winter time um, come by see how well the cows are clearing the uh, the uh, sites up whether it's bale grazing or whether it's straight grazing corn right from the uh, stalk or, or whether it's a, a, a millet or a swath graze so yeah feel free to come by the farm and, uh, and uh, I hope you really think seriously about this it's a really good uh, smart thing to do.